So, we promised you when they dropped the roster, they would. And they did. Also, guys, thanks for some of the feedback. We're going to try this with no background music. So, you guys let me know what you feel about this. But, we're going to get to the men's because there's things we need to talk about. But, this video is about the uh, Canadian women's national team just dropped their roster for their two friendlies against Morocco and Argentina happening October 6th and the 10th. I got thoughts. I always have thoughts. But... If you're new here, guys, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, let us know how you feel about the roster. Again, trying to reach a thousand subscribers, all the fun stuff. But let's get to this. So, the roster dropped. And there are big things. Uh, the biggest thing being Evelyn Vienne is on it. Uh, there could be a clever, there could be a very clever page that we could use. <laughs> a clever word that we could use, but we won't go and be that clever. But let's go over the roster and then let's kind of talk about how we feel about it. So the roster as follows. Goalkeepers, Sabrina D'Angelo, Lucien Pru, Kaling Sheridan. And again, as I say always, if I butcher your name, ladies, players, is it too late now to say sorry? And we're going to stop it there. <laughs> so defenders, Kadisha Buchanan, Alyssa Chapman, Ashley Lawrence, Jade Rose, Bianca St. George, Surayeka, Shalina Zadorsky in the midfield, Simia Wujo, Zoe Burns, Jesse Fleming, Julia Grosso, Quinn, Sophie Schmidt, and Desiree Scott. Forwards, Janine Becky, Jordan Heidema, Chloe Lacasse, Clarissa Lurisi, Adriana Leon, Nichelle Prince, Christine Sinclair, and Evelyn Vienne. So how do I feel about this roster? Um... I feel different ways about it, to be honest. Um, excited to see some names. Good to see some names back. My feelings are interesting. Uh, so the opponents you're playing, let's start there. They're playing Morocco. Morocco, who just finished hosting the Women's African Cup of Nations, did a great job hosting, made the finals, but lost to South Africa. And Argentina, who they have played at the She Believes Cup at the beginning of last year. Uh, which is an interesting on that note. After this window, Canada would have played at least 14 of the 32 teams at the World Cup over the last two years, which is an interesting stat. Depends what you want to do with it. But as with all rosters, we always look at them and say, what can we actually take from this? <sighs> well, let's start out back. I know we were there were many fans. I think Laura on Twitter brought this up. We wanted to see maybe a three in the back. I don't know if we're going to see a three at the back because technically we only have three center backs here. I know Suryeka played as a center back there, so she would technically be center back four. And then break glass in case of emergency would be Quinn, Gabby Carl still not back. But your three center backs, Kadisha Buchanan, Jade Rose, and Shalina Zadorsky. This basically does scream you're going to have a four in the back type of system but also because you're playing both morocco and argentina morocco may try to p push back a little bit more but especially with argentina you're gonna have most of the possession but this is gonna be a low block similar to how the men's played the last two you're probably playing two teams who are going to be pushing you in a low block and trying to make you create from there so seeing how they can combine how they can move what they can do with that that really was what it shows to me that's what i'll be curious to see what they break down with your fullbacks at Chapman, Lawrence, St. George's, and probably at some point, Janine Becky. I know probably won't have to because you have three of each. I'm not sure. I thought Suryeka was injured still. Um, if someone can give me an update on that. She hasn't played as of yet, but unless she's coming back on rehab, maybe you have a similar situation like the men had with Tejan where he's on a very limited minutes count. But... I'm assuming Suryeka is not available, which means you have three center backs and three full backs. That to me says probably Janine's going to have to play from the back, which isn't really the worst choice. At least there you can see a few more forwards, especially on the wings. When we get to the midfield, Simia Wujo, Zoe Burns, the, the Trojans together reunited, and it feels so good. Zoe Burns in the midfield, we haven't seen her in the midfield since U20. And I know I had mentioned, I'm not sure if it's the right move for her at this point, 
with the lack of bodies at fullback, maybe she gets put back there. I know she has played a little bit up as a winger for USC this year. So she does have that versatility up and down the wing, probably on the left side. Not up and down the flank would be the more appropriate term, but whatever. And I'm wondering how much run they get, especially you're almost seeing a bit of a changing of the style. You don't have any true sixes here other than Desiree Scott. And I'm not sure how much you will need a Desiree Scott in this window. Um, there's not much attacking going on. Even against Australia, we saw the pairing of Fleming and Gross. So we'll really be able to not only play off of the center backs, but also in defending and pressing, cutting off angles. You don't have to be physical in the midfield, but you have to make it difficult. And their speed, cutting off angles, and just really rushing and pressing players in that middle was seen against Australia. And maybe this is a bit of a shift that we start to see. Up front, I mean, Janine Becky, Jordan Heidema, Chloe Lacasse, Clarissa Lurisi, Adriana Leon, Michelle Prince, Christine Sinclair, and Evelyn Viennes. I mean, most women's national teams, XNTs, would all be saying... Vienna was the big name uh, that everyone was hoping to come in, and it's great to see her in. She had an interview with uh, Radio Canada and uh, definitely had some good questions uh, and good points. I think she held herself well in that, as I was saying to my girlfriend. It's, it's very rare for someone to destroy their brand and credibility in an interview. It happens. But it takes a lot of talent and lack of self-awareness to do that. But Vienz is back. Um, and I'll be very curious to see what she can do here. And seeing what type of formations. I think still based off of the personnel, this still screams uh, a 4-2-3-1 window. I'm hoping Bev saw something here and is really excited to continue to progress with it. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more movement. It'd be nice. Uh, some earlier substitutions. These are teams that you're more than likely going to place in your group because Canada right now is slated in the pot two. Uh, Morocco and Argentina at this point would be considered pot three, pot four teams. So these are the level of, of teams you'll probably be facing in your group. And then you're going to be facing one of the likes of Australia, New Zealand, I just forgot all the teams. Australia, New Zealand, not the U.S. because of confederation rules. So France, Germany, England, Sweden, the Netherlands, one of those teams. So playing other teams there, or maybe playing teams within your bracket, maybe playing a Spain wouldn't be a bad idea because they are also right on the edge, right on the edges of that pot one but Spain is definitely probably not an option at this point. If you haven't been following what's going on, uh, all I'll say is, guys, listen to your players. I will always side with the players because I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. But yeah, the situation in Spain, if you aren't aware of it, you should really read something. But yeah, about 15 players resigned from the national team wanting a coach to be removed because of the conditions they were in. But this is not about Spain. This is about Canada. But guys, go on, read on that and... Yeah, make your opinion as you will. Be that as it says. When I look at this roster, yeah, it screams like a 4-2-3-1. Am I happy with it? Am I disappointed with it? There's a degree with me where I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, just because you're in Europe. And this is nothing against the NWSL players. My mindset is you're going to have to start seeing new players at some point. And... Unless the goal is to make sure every national team player has 300 caps, there is a question of do they have to come for every window? I'll use the NWSL players, not to say that they don't need to come, but this definitely is right at the end of their season, and then their playoffs for the teams that are making it will be there. I don't think it would have hurt necessarily if we left some of the NWSL players there now granted that means any of or of all of these players anyone from Alyssa Chapman Bianca St. George's if she makes it uh, Quinn Janine Becky Jordan Heidema Michelle Prince Christine Sinclair 
I'm not saying they all should have stayed, but it wouldn't have hurt to let some of them maybe get some rest. You're, they're about to embark on windows coming through, and because they're in Europe, for me, I would have liked to see some more fringe players. Um, after this, we will know. After this window, we will know who they're playing at the World Cup, which means World Cup preparations essentially begin. So for me, it would have been nice to see some of those fringe players, whether it's a Sarah Stratagakis, whether it's a Mary Alidou, um, whether it's even a Victoria Pickett who's in the NWSL, but some of the European-based players who are on the fringes and get them a look so that once you start going in, you have more of it. This is nothing against NWSL players, and this isn't against the uh, NCAA players who are coming in, especially with Simi Rujo and Zoe Burns. I think they've definitely played well and earned getting a call up but with young players you know maybe for me I think they still have some time and sometimes with Bev she doesn't go to her bench if you look at the Australia window Simi Rujo played 20 minutes against Australia then nothing the same with Clarissa Larissi and so for me is it worth bringing a player who's gonna play just 30 minutes in two windows yes there's the training and all that we don't see as fans but in terms of game time is it worth that for a player to do that or rather have them have game full games over that same period amount of time i'm not the coach but it's just a question worth asking again the quality these aren't level tier one opponents these are opponents that would be in pot three and pot four for the world cup so opponents that Canada more than likely will be playing, and they are at the World Cup, so they may as well possibly play these teams. But will we be able to see enough of these players to be able to gain what it is? Is, is 20 minutes on the pitch enough to gauge what a player's quality is? I mean, if I have a criticism of Bev Priestman, I think that would be it. I don't see training, so that's a bit harsh on my end, and I get that. But on the pitch... You, you got to see them. You got to test them in that sense. And and I'm of the, sometimes of the, the mindset of give them a chance to fail versus starving them a chance to succeed. And I think if we can give some of these players, whether this is their last chance or not, it does, I would have liked to see a few more players, at least for Bev's perspective. She knows what she has in her starters. She knows what she has in her vets. But maybe start to see some other players at the back end of the roster who could fight for positions. And yes, we're seeing that. But when we're constantly calling the same group over and over again, yes, you build chemistry. But then you're also, to a degree, not allowing other players to build chemistry. Right? Like, it goes both ways, really. So it's not, it's just my opinion. And you guys let me know if you agree with it or not. But I feel that. This would have been a great opportunity to see some more players on the fringe. Now, granted, there's still November. They could still do that. But once you enter November, you have November, February, March, and then maybe an April or a May. But you have three to four max windows, including this one, to see players. So after this, you're essentially in full-scale preparation mode, which means essentially these are the players that she's looking at. And is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. But I do find that it, it would have been nice for me. I, I don't think that our depth is that low that we don't have enough other players to take a look at. Um, so that's it. Also on a very random note, do we, do we have more than five center backs um, in the system? And again, this is something that does irk me in terms of just rosters. I know that there are defenders, but I could, could we just be specific with that? Because then I got to be like, oh, they're a defender. I'm like, are they a center back? Are they a fullback? Yes, you can play multiple players, can play multiple positions, and I get that. But it's a pet peeve of mine. Just list players in the positions. I'd rather have wingers, midfielders, strikers, fullbacks, and center backs than just defenders, midfielders, and attackers. But that's just my... <laughs> That's my axe to grind. But yeah, roster is out. I don't hate it. It's definitely interesting. I'm hoping that we actually get to see the players on the pitch. You are playing competition that would allow you to do so. 
so I'm hoping they're able to do so. But however, I think at this point, there's a degree where you have to really look at um, what is really... I think at this point, there's a degree where you really have to look at in terms of how much game time they're going to have. And I think that's going to be the question. So I'm going to stop rambling now. You guys let me know how, what you think. You like the roster? What are you looking to see? Just let me know in the comments.